Hey, what's up, you tumulus? EXO coming at you here, feeling pretty good. Hope the holidays are treating you well so far. Staying happy, staying warm, and subscribing to the YouTube channels. Thanks for joining the fun. On today's video, we'll expose another hidden gem that just might have bit off more than it can chew. What are we talking about? The Savage A4, an ultra small Bluetooth enabled home audio amp. So what do you say? Since we all tend to favor our speakers most, let's dive into this amplifier and see what this bad boy is all about. First up and out of the package, holy puny. This thing is smaller than it looks. Easily held in just one hand, it's nothing like a clunky old receiver. It's got a nice clean looking faceplate, digital display, and if you look real closely, a slightly slanted aluminum body. It comes with a remote control for easy access, and because it's designed for both speakers and headphones, there are two different amps on the inside. The power amplifier is rated at 80 watts per channel into four ohms, and the headphone amp puts out 60 milliwatts at 32 ohms. Pretty decent, just don't forget to correct the settings when switching back and forth. Pretty sure that's a surprise we'd all want to avoid. The speaker terminals on the back have screw-on heads that work fine with both bare wires or banana plugs. And if you need more bass, you can also add your own powered subwoofer thanks to the handy dandy sub pre-out option. There's stock DSP profiles like rap and super bass, but you can just fiddle around with the bass and treble yourself until it sounds just right. The Bluetooth antenna threads right into the back and helps a good amount too. In total, there's five different inputs. Some inputs obviously have different ways of gathering music, so sampling rates will vary from different ones, all the way from 48 kilohertz on Bluetooth to 192 kilohertz on optical. And remember, the larger the sampling rate, the more musical info we get to hear. The only problem with all this is of course the infamous Class D sound quality debate. So many people would argue that Class D has no place in the living room. But what about this little guy right here? Does the A4 hold up to say a regular old AB home receiver? Well, as much as it tries to keep the music clean and clear, the output filters just fall a bit short. A quick look under the oscilloscope, and it's hard denying, we've got some noise, folks. See all those fuzzy lines inside the wave? That's a classic symptom of Class D switching speeds. Essentially, Class D amps work by sending out thousands and thousands of very small pulses to eventually make up and form a much larger wave. So if we zoomed in to say a 40 hertz tone, those very small pulses actually become visible. But here's the kicker and why it's still so relevant today. The amplifier does all this crazy stuff over a hundred thousand times per second. So technically the ear can be easily tricked, but the oscope, not so much. And that's where the arguments usually start. Some people will say these modulations are impossible to hear, while others just point and laugh saying it's all too obvious. Well, let's take a quick look for ourselves. Here's a quick comparison between this amp and a regular AB receiver. See how one wave has no fuzz? Well, that's the reason so many people associate Class D with dirty sound. By its very nature, Class D will always have some sort of distortion present from filtering a PWM output. So in reality, whenever we listen to anything Class D, we're actually listening to a filtered square wave, not an exact copy of the original input. And that's why it's so important to have proper filters with Class D technology, otherwise the sound gets all mucked up. And following suit here, our A4 could really use an upgraded output filter. I mean, crap, even at zero volume, there's still a noticeable static sending to the speakers. Oh my gosh. And on top of that, something super strange happens the second you go over volume 50. All of a sudden, you can't play anything over six kilohertz without sounding like absolute crap. But the second you drop the volume below that number, it goes right back to normal and plays up to 20 kilohertz. Well, as best it can. Oh my gosh. Listen to that. It's like R2-D2's mating call. Whoa, whoa, did you hear that? Listen to that. That's freaking bass. The harmonics are literally so bad, we're playing different octaves. Look at the speaker. 
We're playing freaking single digit bass. Ah! That is dangerous. Oh my God, it goes all the way up. And the second you bring the volume back down just a little bit, she evens out. We'll zoom in here real quick and show you just how deceiving this can all be. Go right down into the wave and reveal all of that added noise, which in a perfect world, the filters are supposed to make nice and smooth. But until obviously that time exists, the A4 just has a little bit of catching up to do. Don't let all this discourage you though. Class D isn't going anywhere and it's super efficient and totally possible to have good sound quality it's just a very challenging thing to do correctly. So at the end of the day, would I suggest the A4 as a go-to option? Eh, probably not, but for non-critical listening, sure, maybe a crappy pair of garage speakers or even a little mini woofer test station, pretty much wherever sound quality isn't a must, this little guy will do just fine. Verdict is in everybody and solely based off personal opinion, I think I can hear a difference between the Savage and the Yamaha, especially during those moments in the song where the frequency goes up pretty high. I can't quite explain it, but I want to make sure I pick my words right here. The Savage just sounds a little bit clouded and fuzzy when it goes up to a certain point, but the Yamaha sounds nice and rich and if it's the right word to explain it kind of warm. So at the end of the day, I think I'm gonna stick with my guns and use this little fella 
just for some odds and ends around the house and nothing with really hi-fi in mind. So if you enjoy messing around with speakers just like me and love checking out new gadgets and seeing if they hold up to all the hype, make sure you check out the other videos on the channel and be sure to stay subscribed here. We got much more um, in the mix coming here for the YouTube videos. So thanks for watching this video. This is EXO signing out. I will talk to you in the next one. I hope you have a good weekend here. Just this whole week has been crazy, but I'm plugging away, getting the workshop done. Workshop? No, workshop in order. So that will be the next video for you guys to enjoy. Thanks for joining the ride. I will talk to you in the next one. This is EXO signing out. Okay.